When it comes to examination of your thesis, after all the hard work you have put into it, you want this document to be the most professional looking piece of work you have ever produced. Neat, error free and able to communicate to your examiners the depth of your efforts in doing and writing about your research. There are many different tools and tips for formatting and laying out your thesis document in a professional, neat way. And this short video and the next one in this section of the website will show you a few of these and explain why formatting and laying out your document professionally is quite important at this level. This video will look at headings and using these to generate an automatic table of contents. In a document the length of an MA or PhD thesis or honours long essay, you will need to use headings as signposts to guide your reader through your argument. This is a key point. Headings actually communicate meaning. They indicate the level of importance of certain sections of the thesis and also the relationship between sections of the thesis. There are thus different heading levels and it is useful to understand what these are and what they say to your readers so that you can use them effectively to create structure and meaning in your own writing. First level headings are main headings like chapter 1, chapter 2 and so on. Second level headings would then be used for the main sections of the chapter such as introduction, conclusion and so on. Third level headings would then be for subsections within the second level sections and fourth level headings for further subsections. We wouldn't recommend going further than four levels of headings as this can get rather fiddly and confusing, especially with the numbering. If you look at this example from a recent PhD thesis, you can see what the different heading levels look like in a table of contents. Here are the first level headings, here are the second level headings, here are the third level headings, and here are the fourth level headings. I am now going to show you how to generate these headings using Microsoft Word. I am doing this on a MacBook, but you can do this on a PC as well because these tabs are found in similar places and the principles are the same so that you can adapt them according to the software that you have. On the Home tab, you're going to find these buttons here. These are your styles. You can modify them according to the template that you've set up for your document. So to modify Heading Level 1, you right-click on Heading 1 and select Modify. Leave all of this up here the same. What you want to focus on is this bottom section where it says Formatting. I want mine to be Times New Roman because that is the font in which I'm typing my whole document. And because this is a chapter level heading, I want it to be slightly bigger. So I'm going to try 16 point font. I want it to be bold and I want it to be in black. This box here will show you a sample of what it is that you're trying to do. Then come down here to where it says Format and click on Paragraph. I want quite a big space after so I'm going to extend this to 12, but I don't want this to be too far from the top of the page. So I'm actually going to make this naught because I want my heading to be right at the top of the page. Here, this is the spacing before and after your headings. I don't want my headings to be in anything other than single spacing, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And you can see here what it is that I've done. I'm going to click OK now and click OK here after I've said Add to Template. I want this to be something that I can keep choosing for every new document. So I'm going to create a template and I'm going to click OK. You then repeat this for each of the headings, but your headings are going to be slightly different because you don't want them all to look the same. They need to be visually different in order to communicate the different levels of meaning to your readers. So it's going to stay in Times New Roman, but this time I'm going to reduce it to font size 12, which is the font size for the rest of my text keep it in bold, keep it in black. But I'm going to have different spacing. I don't want it to start right underneath the other headings, so I'm going to have six points before and six points after, which is quite a small space. And I'm going to keep it as single spacing and click OK. Now I'm going to set up my third level heading. This must look different again, so I'm going to keep it in Times New Roman with 12, and I'm going to add italics here so that it looks different from the second level heading because these will be subsections of the second level sections. Subsections of, for example, the introduction or the second section of my chapter. Again, I'm going to have six points before and after. 
and I'm going to click OK. And then finally, I'm going to set up my fourth level heading. I'm going to keep it as Times New Roman, but this time I'm just going to underline it and have it in plain text. I'm also going to change the spacing around it because I don't want any spacing around it. I want a little bit before, but I don't want anything after. I want the text to start right underneath the heading. So I'm going to say OK. Now I can assign these different levels my different headings. So this is a first level heading. I'm going to click Heading 1. You'll see how it immediately changes the format. This is a second level heading, so I'm going to assign it heading number 2. This is a third level heading. And this is a fourth level heading. Now, imagine that I have finished my thesis and I now want to generate a table of contents for the thesis. All the way through my document, I have assigned all of my different headings their particular styles that I have set up. So now I'm going to go to Insert. And I'm going to go down to Index and Tables. In Microsoft Word, you can often find this under Reference. And on the left-hand side, you'll see Table of Contents. But in Mac, it's here, Index and Tables. This screen will then pop up, and I'm going to choose Table of Contents. I'm going to choose a classic design. You can click through and see the different kinds of designs that they offer, but the classic is quite nice. Make sure that where it asks you how many levels of headings to show, you change this to four. Often, the default is set on three, but if you have four levels of headings, you want all of them to be visible in your table of contents. You want it to show the page numbers, and you want it to align the page numbers along the right-hand margin. Then you click OK, and there you go. Your table of contents has been inserted. Now, say later on you come and you edit your document, and this heading, for example, changes to 1.1.2 because you've added a different heading as 1.1.1 now. Well, what do you do about your table of contents? You simply come here, right-click, click Update Field, Click Update Entire Table, click OK, it will search your document and it will add the change that you've put in. The key with using headings is to think carefully about the relationship between the sections and subsections of your chapters. Assigning heading levels should not be arbitrary. If you make every section a level 2 heading, for example, you tell your reader that all these sections have equal importance. Yet there may be parts of these sections that should be subsections of a larger part or a larger section and should therefore have a level 3 heading. Structure communicates meaning and thesis writing is all about creating and communicating your meanings clearly to your readers and examiners. These are tools that will help you do this and save you a lot of time and effort, but they cannot create the structure or meaning for you. You will still need to work that out before using the tools to make your final thesis neat and well laid out so that it is more readable and presents your hard work in the best possible light.